it's Ruby. Today we're heading to Anaheim, California, and we're gonna be doing a review of the Club Wyndham, or the World Marked by Wyndham, that's located in Anaheim. The first thing that I wanna bring up about this resort is that it is one of three Club Wyndhams in the area, and one of two of the World Marked by Wyndham locations, so do not get it confused with the Dolphins Cove Resort. I do have a video on that, so if you're interested, you can check it out, I'll link it below. And there's also a newly opened Peacock Suites that Club Wyndham has taken over. This is not those, <laughs> this is the Anaheim World Marked by Wyndham or Club Wyndham Resort that's located right off of Catella. The thing that I love the most about this resort is the location, okay? You cannot beat this location as far as large timeshare type venues go in that area. This resort is right next to the Garden Walk, which is a collection of restaurants and stores and shops that are open for you to shop, for you to go have like a nice dinner. One of my favorite places to eat when I'm in Anaheim, outside of Disney itself in downtown Disney, is Bubba Gump's. There's a Bubba Gump's and a Cheesecake Factory located right next to this resort. So plenty of food and dining options as well as small shopping areas if you're into you know, hitting up some of the stores or if you're looking for something specifically. I do wanna highlight one of my neighbors is getting construction done. I hope it's not getting picked up in the video. If it is, I apologize in advance, but I really wanted to get this review out to you. Now, as far as location goes outside of the Garden Walk, this resort is really close to the Orange County slash John Wayne Airport. It's about a 15 minute drive without traffic, 13 miles or so. It's also super, super close to downtown Disney. A lot of the times when people stayed at this resort, they're visiting the parks. And so I would say that for Disneyland, California Adventure, this is an excellent option for you. If you are going to Knott's Berry Farm, this is also an excellent option. And if you are going to Universal Studios or something that's a little bit farther away, just keep in mind this is in Anaheim, it's not in Los Angeles. And so there was a little bit of a drive, but I still think that this venue has so much to offer. Additionally, with location, I mentioned Disneyland, so let's talk a little bit about that. You can walk to downtown Disney from this location. It'll take about 20 minutes to get there, and depending on the time of day, you know, it might take a little bit longer. If you aren't able to walk for long periods of time, there is a Toy Story parking lot right across the street. And I highly recommend, especially if you are visiting the park and you don't wanna walk, to go to that parking lot. There is a pedestrian entrance. You can walk into the parking lot. You'll go through security right there before you even get on the Disneyland bus. And it's super easy. Once you're on, you can go straight into the Disneyland like turnaround area. You don't have to go through the security that's right there outside of the park entrances. They'd put you on the other side of the fence. You'd then enter that like space between Disneyland and California Adventure. When you go into the parks, obviously they're gonna look in your bags one more time, but you don't have to wait in those long security lines that are right there at the entrance to downtown Disney and the Disneyland Park. So it is a really nice option. On the front end, it might take a little bit more time because the park and the buses are available about 60 minutes before the park's earliest entrance time. Unless you're staying at a hotel, then you'd have a different entrance time, um, a Disneyland hotel. But you have about an hour before, so that gives you enough time if you get there right when it opens to you know walk in, go through security, get on the bus, and then they'll take you over and you'll get there right around um, drop. So a really nice option and another highlight as to why I really do like this location, especially if we're visiting the parks. If you do end up having a car and you want to drive somewhere, keep in mind that if you do use your car in the parking lot, at Disney, the Toy Story parking lot, which I don't really recommend, but it's like $30, so it's pretty pricey. And if you park at the hotel itself, the World Mark does have the parking garage right there. They said it's limited, but we didn't have any issues getting our car in there, but it is $10 per day, and they do charge you, which I don't love, but it is what it is, and that's a better option to pay the $10 if you're already staying at the resort, walk into the Toy Story parking lot, you know, catch the bus there, and then you don't have to worry about spending the additional $20 to park on Disney property. If you are not going to the parks, but you're planning to go to downtown Disney, like I mentioned, you can walk, but if you do take the toy parking lot and then take the bus, it's free. Versus if you park at downtown Disney, they are now charging, they will charge you $10 for the first hour. If you spend $20 in downtown Disney, they'll add like an additional three hours that's covered by that $10. But yeah, it's not free anymore, and <laughs> I don't know. I felt away last time I was there and they were like $25. I was like, what? 
But um, yeah, it's a nice option if that's what you're interested in and going there. And I like to tell my kids that I'm taking them to Disney, but not actually taking them to the park. I just take them into downtown Disney and like, oh, we're here, we, we made it. So yeah, I really do like that free option um, if, if that's something that you're going to be interested in. Next up, my second favorite thing about this location is the pool and the hot tub area. The pool is actually connected to the back of the parking garage, but you actually wouldn't know because there's this beautiful like green plant that grows up the side of the wall and it covers completely the parking garage area. If you get close, you can notice the cars and maybe if you know it's really quiet, you might hear the cars, but it's, it's a side area next to the parking garage and the main building and it's a really big pool. They renovated it a couple years ago and I stayed at this location pre-renovation and I didn't love it, but I really do enjoy it now because they did so many updates. So you're gonna have that big, huge main pool. It is heated. Now, do not jump in there in October and then get mad at me because it might be cold. I did not test this out in the middle of winter. I've usually only stayed here in um, warmer months, but there is a large pool, it is heated, and there is multiple hot tubs. So there's a small hot tub that's at the far right, and then there's a larger hot tub at the far left, and so normally people would see that one and they'll go in there, but there is also one in the corner. It is accessible as well, so if you need help getting in and out of the water, you have that option. At the back of the pool area, there is a kiddie pool, and it's pretty big. So if you want to sit there while your baby, you know, swims, or you know, your toddler gets gets their feet wet, you have that option as well. Right next to it, you'll find the barbecue area, and there is plenty of seating and tables, and also like little cabanas that you have to reserve at the front desk. Oh my gosh! And there's just plenty to do out there. It's definitely like a really cute aesthetic, and it. It's really nice and it isn't covered, but depending on what time of day you go, you might have some of the pool shaded. So keep that in mind if you get cold easily or if you get too hot and you wanna go at a time where you have a little bit of shade in the water. They've updated the area with some modern towel dispensary systems and I've seen the same type of system when we stayed at the Hyatt in multiple locations, but essentially you scan your, your card and it will give you a certain amount of towels and when you're done, you leave the towels there. Just make sure you actually leave the towels there. If you take your towels to the room, they will charge you a fee to have housekeeping bring it back. The idea here is to just have a sustainable self-use type towel distribution so they don't wanna have to you know, grab everybody's towels and put it back into the system. They want you to do it. So depending on how you look at that, you might love that, you might not, but that is what's going on with the towels. Little pro tip, if you go online, it doesn't really say that this is there, but right when you are leaving the building to go to the main pool area, there's like a lip, like a little lip there or a little area where you have some toys for the kids to play with. So they might have some tic-tac-toe toys or some chess, but it's kind of a cute thing that they can do, like maybe if the kids are wanting to be outside but they don't want to play in the pool area, they have that there and there is some seating there as well. The second thing I want to bring up is this is not the only water area within the hotel. There is a rooftop hot tub that you can access with your room key at the top of the building and I absolutely love this space. There's two hot tubs there. Again, you need to be able to scan your card to open and access this area and keep in mind that it does get filled up because it's it's very secluded from the other pool areas and there is a ton of seating and a ton of tables right there. Pro tip again, have dinner up there. Have like a nice sunset dinner. It does get a little bit windy, so if you get cold, bring a blanket. And then sit down and enjoy the fireworks. I do say that that area does get full, especially like a half an hour before the fireworks at Disneyland or California Adventure. So get there about an hour early, get your seat. There are some lights up there and some heating lamps. Sometimes they're not on, but keep that in mind because it is like a very cute little space that I don't think everybody knows about or everybody goes to, but you get some amazing views of the park and it's super relaxing. Plus, if you get a room that's not on the side of the building where you can see the fireworks at night, you can go up there and get that experience. Okay, next up, there is a recreation center and an arcade. The kids absolutely love these areas because they're really for them, but also families, to go in there and play pool and also maybe do some arcade games. They do have like a full-blown Jurassic Park 
ride that we didn't get to play on last time, but we're really looking forward to trying out next time we visit the hotel for um, a review of a different room type. But there is a ton to do in there, and the space fluctuates with the amount of people that are there. I'm not sure that everybody knows it's there, and maybe people utilize the pool more. But it's a very big recreation space, and then there's an arcade space. Check it out. I think it is something really fun for the kids to you know, get their energy out and if they want to be inside, like let's say it's actually raining or it's too hot or maybe you've had a long day at the parks and you just want to chill at the resort, you have that option. There's also vending machines there if you want to get some snacks after hours because, you know, people get hungry. <laughs> you never know when, when, you, when hunger will strike. So that option is there as well. Right next to that is a fitness center. And I thought it was so cool because the fitness center has a kids room. So you can bring your kids down there and they can watch TV and there's a little table there if they have like arts and crafts. And they can draw and doodle and you can do your workout and there's a glass between the kids room and the gym area and you can look right in there and kind of watch them as well. It's a really awesome amenity that this resort also has. It's very considerate and family oriented. If you're gonna work out, there are a few exercise machines. It's not like a full gym, but it's not you know terrible either. You're gonna have your treadmills, you're gonna have your elliptical and some bike machines. There are some free weights if you're gonna do like a HIIT workout or maybe just some arm curls or squats or something like that. There's plenty of options and weight there. And then they also have multi-purpose weight machine and that one was kind of busy. Every time I went in there, there was like somebody on it, but keep that in mind. If you go maybe really early or late, you can have access to that gym equipment and you can bring your kiddo around if you need to. I kind of skipped over the lobby and I don't want to because like I mentioned, I like to take my kids to Disneyland without taking them to Disneyland. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I go with them, sometimes I don't. I, I don't regret either choice I make, but sometimes I just wanna have a, maybe like a low budget time off. And it is really cool when you walk into the lobby and they have a Disney inspired gift shop right there. And then you can also buy Disney tickets if you'd like to do that, or other park tickets. Plenty of the parks you can buy tickets right there at the concierge desk or the lobby desk. So that's really nice because you got that little taste of magic. And then I am a shopper, window shopper, <laughs> depending on like what's going on or what I need. And there is a gift shop right there. It is called The Boutique and they have things on sale. I'm just gonna put it out there. They got things on sale from time to time, so you might get a good deal on stuff. But you can go in there and browse, you know, some of the latest Disney type inspired things, or if you know you need like ears or you need a visor or a hat or something like that, you can get it at this location as well as clothing. Right next to it is the marketplace. Now the marketplace features Starbucks coffee and you know I love a good coffee. It has pretty rounded hours. I will also bring up that you can get hot food like sandwiches there and they have an array of menu items. You should check it out to see what's available at the time of day that you're there. But it also is just a really basic marketplace as well. You can get a bunch of drinks. Candy, popcorn, we are big on popcorn. Keep in mind this is a timeshare so usually you get a bag of popcorn in the room for free when you check in and you can ask for more. But we love popcorn in our movies. Speaking of movies, this location has movie rentals. When I was growing up and we were going to Timeshare, that was one of the things we loved to do is get the board games and the movie rentals. And they do charge, before it was free, but they do charge, act that out, but also keep in mind that a lot of the TVs are smart TVs, so if you bring your Amazon Fire Stick or something like that, you can you know, get your streaming services for free if you hook up to the Wi-Fi. And also ask about the Wi-Fi, it is accessible, sometimes they charge, sometimes it's included with what you already pay for your timeshare, or if you're a guest of a timeshare owner, you, know, you can do the Wi-Fi option. Talked about the marketplace, the gift shop, the lobby, super grand and big. There is multiple elevators. I don't think people really realize that. There's one elevator that's closest to the parking garage and there's also a VIP lounge area for owners. It's super weird because I've actually never gone into a lounge area or the owner's lounge unless I was doing a timeshare presentation. So next time I might ask to see if they just let you back there. I kind of got the impression that they only let you back there if you're doing a time share presentation. But then I don't think they would call it a owner's lounge, so something to think about or to try out. Let me know in the comments if you've gone in there without having a presentation slated. 
Along the lines of services available, there is a concierge desk there. So like I mentioned, you can get tickets to different events or if you know you're visiting California for the first time and you want to know what you should do or what's in the area, that's also an excellent option. And also if you're going to try to make some reservations at the various restaurants there, they can help with that as well. We didn't spend time in the business center, but there is a business center with a computer that you can use and you can opt to print out your boarding pass. I know some people love to travel with their boarding pass in hand. I actually do like to have a hard copy, but ask about that. All right, so let's now get into the rooms themselves. We've stayed at this resort, like I mentioned, multiple times, and each time that we've been there, we stayed in a two-bedroom suite. So I'm gonna be walking you through what that two-bedroom suite looks like. I do want to note to you that there are one bedroom, two, three, four, and studio apartment slash suites available at this location. And there is presidential suites for the two, three, and four bedrooms. Those are just super fancy, kind of a different color palette versions of the suite. You'll have more space for eating. There'll be like a larger, grander dining room, really more vibrant decorations in the bedrooms, like you'll see more velvet there. And then the kitchens are different. They're, they're way fancier, and then there's way more seating in the kitchen area. It's kind of like a focal point. A lot more space so check that out if you um, are able to opt for like a free upgrade or you can ask at check-in if any of those presidential suites are available if you're going at a high high travel season time you might not be able to get them but really a cool option and the fact that there's so many different versions of the presidential suites does also give this resort a edge Another thing I want to mention is when you do book, keep in mind if you have a studio, while you do get a kitchen and you do have the bedroom and it's connected to the living room area, you're not going to have a full kitchen. In all of the one, two, three, and four bedrooms, you're going to have a full kitchen, meaning you have a stove and you also have a oven. I uh, recently went to New Orleans and like it wasn't clear to me that there was not an oven and I was planning to do all this cooking, so I was a little bit disappointed. Keep that in mind, if you're booking a studio and you're expecting to be able to do all this cooking, you will not have an oven. You can probably call downstairs to see if they have a hot pan. They may or they may not, but either way, keep that in mind if you're gonna do cooking. That is one of the benefits, and I will go right into the kitchen itself. That's one of the benefits of staying at a timeshare property. The timeshares are set up for large families and for you to go for a while. So you can do all your cooking in the apartment. You've got a fridge there. You've got a ton of utensils and dishes. Uh, you have a lot of times blenders and electronic cooking devices that can help you baking or if you're doing some high-end, you know, steak, steak seasoning. You're not going to have like a, what's that called? The iron pan? The hot iron pan? You're not going to have that, but you're going to have, you know, like the basics. I do always recommend bringing foil, oil, butter, and seasoning. You're not gonna have any of that and you don't wanna have to go and buy that when you're down there. There is a Target pretty close, so if you have a car, you could set up a Target run. I do do that a lot of times when I travel. I'll grab like, especially if they have a grocery store right there, I'll just like put everything in and then click the button when I get on my flight, land, get the car, grab my Target order, and then head into the resort. That's part of my like regular plan when I travel. You can do that as well. Right next to the kitchen is going to be a, a bathroom usually, especially if you have a two bedroom. And there will also be a space for the family to sit in like a community living room area. There's a couch there and most of the time the couch is a pullout. Definitely check your room type. And we usually put the kiddos on the pullout bed in the living room. They like it because they have a large space, they're close to the fridge. And then there's also the TV right there so they can watch movies and kind of relax while they are traveling with us. And there's also going to be a, I guess I'll call it like a patio area. It's not good, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not super fancy, it's not super big, unless you're in the presidential. I know the presidentials have like full tables out there, but you will have like a little, a little like area for you to stand there and look around. If you do want to see the fireworks, like I mentioned, from the comfort of your room, instead of having to go up on the rooftop, make sure you put that request in. I do not know how that's awarded. I swear, like, I've made reservations super early, checked in early and asked for it and not gotten it. So good luck to you and let me know when or if you were able to get the view of the parks with the fireworks from your room and how you did that. I've not been able to, so there's that. Moving on, another thing that I love about this uh, location is you do have the standard laundry washer and dryer in your unit. 
such a time saver. A time saver, but then also a packing saver, okay? Who wants to pack like an outfit for 100 kids? I don't, or myself even. And so it's really nice to have that. They will give you laundry detergent. The laundry detergent is not amazing. It's not tied, you know? It's not what you might get at some of the other resorts. Uh, this one is just kind of really basic brand. So, you know, just bring your own pods or bring your own laundry detergent, unless you don't care and you just want to use theirs. But it's not substantially amazing. You have the washer and dryer right there. You'll either have it in the bathroom itself or you'll have it right next to the bathroom. Nice, nice little amenity to have in the room. It's like a home away from home. It's like the whole point, right? The two bedroom unit that we were in had a king bed with its own private bathroom, the dressers and side drawers. A lot of the rooms, like I mentioned, are updated. They were renovated a couple years ago. Like I wanna say like five years ago, but don't quote me on that. It was less than eight, I know that, because we stayed here for uh, going to the Halloween party at Disneyland pre-renovation. Yeah, they've updated. <laughs> so you're gonna have like the plug-ins for your phone or special lighting right there next to the bed. I do really like that, especially if you're sharing the room or if you somebody that wants to stay up and someone else that wants to go to sleep, there's that. You also will have additional closet space and an area for you to pull your suitcase out. Sometimes I've seen the units with two of the suitcase luggage area carrier things and sometimes I haven't. So keep that in mind. You also should have a safe deposit box Sometimes you'll have it in the closet in both rooms and sometimes you don't. So keep that in mind as well and look for that when you are looking at the rooms. The beds themselves, I've never really had issues with the Club Wyndham or World Marked by Wyndham beds. Actually, I take that back. The World Marked by Wyndham resorts that are maybe more dated, their beds might not be as good. But usually if it's like a Club Wyndham and a World Marked property, their beds are better. And haven't had any issue with beds. Plenty of uh, clothes and blankets. And if you need more, you can just ask. Usually you need to look in both closets to see where the bedding is for that pull-up couch that I mentioned in the middle. And I do sometimes ask for extra blankets because sometimes they try to fit whatever they can into that plastic bag and it's just not enough. So make sure you do check that out. Sometimes you'll have some separate pillows and sometimes you won't. You'll have to give up some of yours. But again, call down and housekeeping is super helpful. They'll bring you some extra things if you need it. The second bedroom in the unit that we stayed in had two queen beds and did not have a bathroom in the unit. The bathroom was outside of the unit. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's kind of like ends up being a community bathroom and living room will cosplay as another bedroom in the evening and so be able to have people use the second bedroom and use the bathroom. I said two queen beds, it's actually two twin beds that we, we had in our unit. But you can book either or just look online and make sure that you're looking at what bed type it has. Nothing fancy about the soaps and shampoos and conditioners that are available. I recommend that you bring your own. The bathrooms are pretty simple. I feel like they were practical. One of them had a bathtub shower. Actually, I think both of them had a bathtub. And also the bedrooms in our unit, you came into like the main area and then there was a bedroom on each side. But some of those, some of those rooms, depending on where you are in the building, might have both of the bedrooms on the same side and then the other amenities on the other side. So it kind of depends, the layouts do vary. And like I said, the view varies depending on what you ask for and what they actually give you. Overall, this is a very conveniently located resort. I might have trouble trying to book it if you are not a timeshare owner. I feel like I've seen it available to book on some websites, but check that out to make sure. And if not, I mean, I'm sure somebody posted on Airbnb, so that's an option that you could look at as well. Very good option for families, and even if you're not traveling with your family, you could grab that one bedroom or the studio, be super close to the parks or the amazing food that's right there, and just kind of enjoy Anaheim. All right, you guys, well, that is what I had for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please consider following me on Instagram or like commenting and subscribing on this video. You could also add alerts if you want to see what I'm up to. I'm also doing a lot of shorts to kind of show you guys like a trailer to my videos and so I'll do one for this one as well but if there's something in Anaheim or maybe something that you want us to review or check out let me know because we are always open to trying new things well thank you so much for watching I'll talk to you later bye